Good morning, good morning, good morning. Just a quick one today. So, what's he doing? There's, um, yeah, so, uh, on my way to work as usual, I just thought I'd let you know that I uh, recently put the fees up. Something that we all have to do. Uh, fee, a fee increase is something that tends to go on in the background, I think, in a dental surgery because you can sort of, you worry about putting the fees up and then you put the fees up and then nothing happens, you know? So, I would, uh, I wouldn't recommend that you necessarily put your fees up every year, but I've been, it's been just over two years now, so, uh, and we were looking decidedly cheap on certain things, like we, we were about, we we're 300 and something for a molar root treatment. So, and it's looking, you know, and compared to the, what I'm doing is I'm getting a much better idea of the uh, effort involved in in doing uh, multi-rooted molars, for example, to the sort of the standard that we like to work. So and that turns out that it was a little bit uh, less than what we needed to uh, spend the amount of time that they usually take. So, and even multi-rooted pre-molars, I think we were charging 200 and something, which for private endo is, is very reasonable, you know. So, I put the fees up across the board uh, for 4.9%. And the way I did that was I looked at uh, what, how prices have moved in the last two years. And what you should do really is you should look at how your your input costs have moved in the last two years, you know? your Because um, it's dental inflation you're interested in, isn't it? It's not uh, retail price inflation or consumer price inflation um, but you know which which one of us can say that we know with certainty unless we're running a big corporate how our prices have increased you know you just sort of get a seat of your pants feeling don't you for whether you're making money or not making money or losing money or whatever so uh, just a quick uh, recap on the difference between the two. The retail price index is was intended to be like a shopping basket of prices based on like uh, um, what the average person's wages needed to cover. So it would include stuff like bread and milk and stuff like that. But it also included um, what you needed to pay for your mortgage or your rent. And uh, so if rents went up, then the RPI went up. And if and same with mortgages went up, the, the, the RPI went up. And then, so that in a way it was, you know, like most things, it was, <laughs> it was closer to how things should have been done than its eventual replacement, which was the consumer's price index, which is the CPI. And the difference is that the CPI excludes uh, housing costs. And the reason why they did that was because um, uh, they, well, the, the, ostensibly the reason why they said they did that was because they were standardising measurements of cost of living across Europe and uh, some, you know, most European countries did not include housing costs in their cost of living indices. And therefore for us to include living, cost of living in ours was made incompatible, so comparisons couldn't be made. So we had to take housing costs out, um, and that was also, I mean, it was very convenient for the government at the time because at the time housing costs were were literally going through the roof. So uh, it was a period of very, very uh, fast uh, increases in uh, mortgages, uh, cost of mortgages, and cost of rents because we had a housing shortage. Um, I won't go into the reasons why we had a housing shortage, but I mean it was an you know, increased divorce rate and uh, people living longer and therefore they're not dying and freeing up their houses and all these sort of things. So anyway, um, so the CPI was born which excluded the housing costs and, and it, it's lower, you know, it increased more, more slowly than the RPI. So the government, which had a lot of benefits indexed to RPI, immediately moved them all on to CPI because it meant that uh, they would need to increase them less. And of course there's a big hoo-ha about it at the time. And it was, uh, but I mean they did it anyway. So uh, 
So now we've got these two indicators, the CPI and the RPI, which of which I would argue the RPI is, is probably, you know, the RPI is what the unions always wanted to use when they were negotiating pay, because they knew that it was a, it was a better uh, cipher for what people were actually paying. And the government insisted on using the CPI when negotiating because it was uh, basically it was a lower increase. And also, you know, paying pension benefits and social security benefits and things like that. So, I looked at both and what, you know, I mean, I have got the luxury of being able to choose either. So what I've done is I've chosen the RPI, which, but then I've always chosen the RPI. I've never used the CPI, never liked the CPI, never agreed with it, never used it, you know. I don't agree with, um, massaging government statistics or downright fiddling government statistics blatantly misleading with government statistics which is which is you know the government is certainly not above doing and in fact routinely does and it's, it's the way of government to do that so um, so I looked at the, uh, the the increase in the RPI over the last two years and it was about 4.9 percent so that's what I've gone with and it has the advantage of being slightly less than 5%, so you know, should anyone ask, which they won't, I'll be able to say that we've increased our prices by less than 5% over the last two years. Um, the, um, the way that we did it was, you know, in some ways it's easy and in other ways it's difficult. We, our SFD, Systems for Dentist software, does, is not very good about these changes at all. There's no undo. There's no instructions and there's no clear way to do it. Uh, and the way that does look like the way to do it doesn't work. So I had to ring the support and uh, tell them, you know, that I wanted to put my fees up across the board with effect from a certain date by 4.9% and that's what they do. And then when you go back to the computer, it's all done. So that was good in a way, you know, I mean, it's just one phone call. I don't like working like that. I don't like having to ring up people to change my fees or ring up people to change my website or anything I do believe these days you should have the autonomy and the control to be able to do that but in this case it's just the only way I could get it done easily um, the problem is it then uh, it then sort of leaves you you then have to tidy the whole thing up because you, you end up with fees like 400 pounds and a penny or uh, you know, 500 pounds and two pence or something. But, which is, you know, I mean, in these days of computers, you might say, well, the computer handles all the math, so why bother, you know, what, what's the point? Why round everything? But, in fact, I do, I'm a firm believer that 499 pounds and 99 pence looks better than 500 pounds and a penny. So, uh, it was necessary to go through and change any of the more sort of egregious Mistakes, and you have to sort of you have to sort of try and make sure that you you don't round everything down. You know, because if you round everything down, certainly if you leave it to your receptionist, you you tend to worry that she's going to round everything down. But if you round everything down, then you don't end up with a 4.9 percent increase, do you? Uh, what other problems with increasing the fees? Um, fees on our system like the search and rescue fee the subject access request uh, it's 10 pounds it's statutory charge and so it ends up getting up, put up to 10 pound 49 or something uh, so you have to go through and adjust all those although obviously you can if you charge one and it looks obviously wrong you can either correct it on a one-off basis or or you know make a note to correct it on the fee scale at the, at the time the SFD is good in that you don't have to, in to increase the fees from the 1st of April or the 1st of anything. I think ours came in from the 11th of February or something stupid. So, But the system just automatically looks at the start date of any course of treatment and it charges the fees in effect on the date of the course of treatment starts. Um, that leaves a load of people who have had quotes but haven't started treatment and so you have to make it clear that where you have quoted that quote is valid for a certain time, I think it's one month in our case. Uh, 
Um, and then of course you have to update the website because your website, if it's got any fees on it, will need to be updated. You know, you'll have to say with effect from such and such a date or with effect, with effect from the, the higher figure, sorry, you know. So uh, people don't come in and the whitening is uh, the only thing that we constantly changing. It's 99 and then it's 149, then it's 99 again. And we're constantly getting a muddled up between the um, what we've got on the fee scale and what we've got on the website and of course if someone sees 99 on the website and then comes in and doesn't get charged 99 then you're in trouble right oh. so yeah but then you know when when uh, you're typing in the treatment then and, and you start saying to people well you know it, 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 typically it's something like an extraction you know they come in they want an extraction quickly and so normally I, I sort of remember that it was 84 and then of course you put it up and then you have to sort of tell them it's 91 and you think oh that's funny that's 91 that used to be 84 but to be honest with you like for someone who's coming in and and I always say this, you know, it's all about getting exactly what, if someone's getting exactly what they want, then the money is actually not their primary concern. Uh, and certainly not the difference between 84 and 91 pounds, uh, providing they're getting exactly what they want. If they're not getting exactly what they want, then, um, then, uh, then uh, they will quibble over the money. And if they quibble over the money, uh, then it's because they're not getting exactly what they want. Or there is a very, very small, uh, there's a very, very small number of people who will just squibble for the sake of being an, an idiot, you know, being a dick. Uh, I think I've told you the story about the bloke who sold ra racking shelving, industrial shelving, and, I, and kept saying to me, no, but you can, you can do better than that, you can do better than that, you know. And when I said to him, no, that's it, he said, well, we're, you know, you want to do it like we do it in my industry, we put 10% on so we can knock 10% off. And I'm like, really, what, what's the point of that, you know? You end up just overcharging people 10%. So uh, they go elsewhere and don't use you again because you're expensive, and, but they're too embarrassed to ask for a discount. Or they, they ask you for a discount and, um, and you end up charging them what you were going to in the first place and you could have saved uh, 10 minutes and just uh, told them what the price was so. we don't do discounts as such I mean what would I discount what would I discount what would I discount I might I might give someone I might give someone like a lower price for two crowns if they're next door to each other uh, because you know you haven't you've, you haven't got to give them two injections have you? you haven't got to get them in twice take two molds and everything so there's a saving there isn't there so it's not really a discount as such it's just a, economies of scale uh, but yeah anyway so that's our fee increase and uh, it's all a bit of a big non-event really um, but uh, if you're turning over say two hundred thousand pound a year a five percent uh, increase is another 10,000 isn't it which is you know is your mortgage paid isn't it for a couple of months at least or your wage bill for a, for a couple of months at least or a couple of months payment on your loan whatever so don't you know don't carry on working money is money is getting worth less and less and less right money is really um, devaluing. There's been a lot of inflation in the money supply lately. That's what this quantitative easing is all about. Inflating the money supply. And so the old pound in your pocket is worth less. So you have to charge more of them. Here we go. Right, got to run. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.